So we'll have to remember, remember that we had two different ways to calculate torque. We could focus on F perpendicular or R perpendicular. All right, so let me remind you what those steps are. Well, first of all, we have to identify the forces. So we have the forces. Then we have to choose a pivot point or an axis of rotation. I'm going to choose the middle. Yeah. Now, in this case, maybe we shouldn't say choose. Here we don't have any choice. Okay. This wheel really will be rotating, right? It really, really will be rotating. And what's it rotating around? Well, it really is rotating around the center. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty much forced to say that the center is the axis of rotation. Oops. So here's our pivot. All right, so this is the axis of rotation. Remember that if the object is not rotating, you can choose whatever is convenient to be your axis of rotation. But if the object really is rotating, you have to choose the point it really is rotating around to be the pivot in the axis of rotation. So this is our pivot. OK, um, and uh, then we can start trying to calculate uh, the torques. Um, well, uh, maybe we can start, say, with the torque from the weight. Any idea what the torque from the weight would be here? Um, well, it wouldn't have one because it's coming from the pivot of rotation, so that would mean that the yeah. force would be zero. Say again? That the, that the R would be zero. Yeah, R would be zero for this guy, that's right, which means that the torque is zero. Okay, so we've seen in the past that um, a force that's applied to the pivot causes um, no torque. So there really is a force here. There is the force from the weight, but there's no torque from the weight. Any force that's applied to the pivot does not cause um, any uh, rotation. We, we've seen that in, in examples, and you see with the pen. If I push here, that causes rotation. But since I'm pivoting around my thumb, if I push at my thumb, I'm not causing any rotation. You can't cause rotation by pushing at the pivot, only by away from the pivot. OK, so R would be 0 here, and the torque would be 0. Uh, so what's the torque from the support force? Yeah, so that wasn't really given in the problem, but it kind of stands to reason that the wheel, the pulley is maybe supported on an axle that's going through the center, so we could support, suppose that it's being supported by a force through the center. All right, so anyway, there's not going to be any torque from that support force either that's holding this up. Okay, so the only tricky thing here is going to be to find T. So, uh, yeah, so let's uh, apply that. Let's see if you can draw, we could use either the R or the R perpendicular approach. Um, here. Okay, let's think about that a little bit more. Uh, I guess we can use, say, uh, I guess we can use the R approach. So remember, where is R supposed to go from? Um, the pivot to the point of application of the force. But this is the point of application of the force, right? Because the point of application is where the rope is touching the wheel. So here's our point of application. So this would be the R vector. We should also determine the R vector. So what number is the R vector? Um, it's, the, it's, it's the same as the radius in this case. Which is? Which is 50 centimeters. Right. But we have to use standard units. Mm, so it's um, 0 0.05 meters? Uh, yeah, it would, be, it would be 0.5 meters. 0 0.5. 0 0.5 meters, if we translate centimeters into meters. Okay, so we don't want to draw the R vector to the tip of the tension force here. We want to draw it to the point of application. Well, the point of application is where the rope is touching the pulley. So that would be our R vector. Okay. Um, now, what do you think this angle is here? Uh, 90 degrees. Yeah, it kind of looks like that in the picture. The reason for that is, remember, the tension force is tangent to the circle. Well, a tangent is always perpendicular to a radius. A tangent is always perpendicular to a radius. That's clearest maybe if I can't draw a good circle here. But, uh, so here we have a tangent, and here we have a radius. You can clearly see that the tangent of the circle is perpendicular to the radius. But that would be true for any radius and any tangent. So even if you draw the tangent off of the slant, it's still going to be perpendicular to the radius. That might be a good thing to put in your notes as a problem-solving technique for when you're dealing with uh, circular objects and pulleys on the test. Tangents to the circle always end up perpendicular to the radius. Okay. So, um, remember that here we're, we need to find uh, t perpendicular. What can we say about t perpendicular here? Remember that t perpendicular is the component of the tension that's perpendicular to R. 
So what could we say about T perpendicular here? Um, I'm not sure I understand. So we're going to be using this equation. Okay. We're using uh, this equation for calculating the torque. Okay. Or maybe better yet, maybe we can just put in the sign. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that sign for later. So. so now what is the force we're focusing on? The force is the tension. The force is the tension. So what we really need is T perpendicular. What does this symbol stand for? It's the component of the tension that's perpendicular to the R vector. We need to figure out the component of the tension that's perpendicular to the R vector. Well, the entire vector is perpendicular to R, right? Yeah, that's right. So, so what, what should I say T perpendicular is? T. Just T. Well, that's good because that means we don't need a new variable. The fewer variables we have, the better. So. And again, I'm just putting in these dots to show that these are magnitudes. So um, instead of t, we can say, what's the component of the tension that's perpendicular to the R vector? Well, the entire tension force is perpendicular to the R vector. So um, we can just use the entire tension force. Again, this was because we saw this was a 90 degree angle, because the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So it's good to know that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. OK, so now we can plug in um, a little bit uh, more here. We don't know what the tension is, but we do know what the radius is. That's 0.5. It just becomes 0.5 times t. All right. Now to find the overall tension, we have to find uh, the sign. Is this tension, uh, is this torque uh, going to be giving us a uh, clockwise torque or a counterclockwise torque? Seems right. Good. I guess we have to choose a positive direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. Usually we choose counterclockwise as positive, and especially since that's the direction of movement, maybe we should do that. Um, all right. So then the torque here would be positive. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then our torque overall is. This is the torque from the tension force torque from the tension force is 0.5 times t. And what was the torque from the support force? Well, zero. And what was the torque from the weight? Zero. Uh, that was nice because it was kind of tricky to find this torque. So the other torques turned out to be zero here. Well, what was the reason we were working, trying to figure out those torques all this time? Well, we wanted to plug them into our net torque equation. So now we're finally ready to plug into the net torque equation. How many torques are we going to list on this left-hand side now? Just one. There really is only one torque. All right, did this come out right? The torque from the tension is 0.5 times t. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, we went through a lot of work here, but just to summarize, you can see that the uh, torque is force times distance. Well, the force here is t, and the distance from the pivot is 0.5. The tricky part was to see that the angle was 90, so um, we didn't have to break anything into components uh, over here. OK, so can I erase this? Do you have this in your notes? All right. So we can say that our torque here is 0.5 times t. I'm only going to write one term on the left-hand side because there was only one torque, just the torque from the tension. Anything else we can plug in here? Um, we have a number for i. Yeah, so we might as well plug that in. What, what was that? Uh, 0.75 kilograms. Good. Okay, uh, so where are we? We've got this equation and this equation. Okay, so how many equations have we written down? Two. Two. This one and this one. We've got two equations, and how many unknowns are there in those two equations? Okay, I'm 
glad that you thought of that. Now, the reason that these things are linked with each other is because they're both tied by the same rope. Since they're both tied by the same rope, there should be a relationship between the acceleration of the rope and the uh, acceleration of the wheel over here. All right, so that's an equation that we've seen before that ties these things together. Obviously, we need to get rid of one of the unknowns. Um, so the equation that you're suggesting is this one, right? Okay. Um, so this is the equation that says that the linear acceleration is the rotational acceleration times r. So this is a nifty equation because it relates translational and rotational. Okay, good. So you're pretty sure to have to use these types of equations on the exam. So it's good that you uh, thought of that. 